Here are a few of the strangest looking animals around. Number 8. Scotoplanes When you first see scotoplanes, or a sea pig as they are commonly known, your first reaction might be, what the... because frankly they don't even look like anything we can compare to. To make things even stranger, a sea pig is actually part of the sea cucumber family. Found deep in the ocean, sometimes dwelling at depths of up to 16,000 feet, sea pigs will often travel in huge groups, sometimes consisting of up to 600 individuals. And make no mistake, not only are these guys weird looking, they're truly bizarre creatures. Do you know how they get food? Check this out. What they do is extract organic particles from deep sea mud using a method known as olfaction, which is basically just a super advanced sense of smell. So in a nutshell, they scour the muddy bottoms of the ocean trying to sniff out freshly fallen sea particles. Despite how obscure they may seem, they actually have an important role in underwater ecology. They're a big part of the diet of underwater predators, and their population is being threatened by deep sea trawling. Deep sea trawling is a fishing method that involves pulling a net behind a boat. In many instances, hundreds upon hundreds of sea pigs are accidentally caught during this process in what's known as bycatch. We definitely need these odd looking creatures to help sustain life underwater. That's the thing about nature. Everything is connected in one way or another. Number seven, blue glaucus. While it may look like a creature from Avatar, the blue glaucus is actually a type of sea slug from our world of planet Earth. These tiny little things can grow to only about three centimeters or so. Yeah, they look pretty interesting, but their behavior is even more amazing. If you were to see a blue glaucus, your instinct might be to keep your distance, since they look alien-like. In this case, you should listen to your instincts. Despite their small size, they can actually pack a pretty mean punch. Well, sting, actually. At this point, it's worth noting, one of their many nicknames is the Blue Dragon. And though they're small, they live up to the name. Believe it or not, they prey on much larger creatures such as Portuguese man o' war you know, the jellyfish with painfully fatal stings. By attaching themselves to the main disc of the Man o' War, the Blue Dragon is in prime position to lock their super strong jaws into their flesh and chow down while avoiding being stung by one of the thousands of venomous particles. In fact, they just digest the venom and store it in a special pouch and then uses that very venom as a weapon later on. How crazy is that? Number six, Okapi. Let's say you had never seen or heard of an okapi before. Not a totally crazy scenario. And let's say you happen to see one while trekking through Central Africa or while visiting a zoo. You might look at one of these things and think something along the lines of, well, that's an animal that's thrown together with other animal parts. Standing only four to five feet with a long neck, it looks like a cross between a zebra and a giraffe. And to be fair, it's actually part of the giraffe family. So yeah. Both the giraffe and the okapi evolved from a common ancestor some 11 and a half million years ago. And while the giraffe is known for their long neck, the okapi more resembles their ancestors, leading some people to refer to them as living fossils. Found mostly in the tropical forests of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the okapi feeds on plants while avoiding being eaten by leopards. They also live a solitary lifestyle until it comes time to mate, which sort of sounds kind of cool. Just give them a cell phone and Netflix account and they fit in pretty well with millennials. Number five, Pacific Barrel Eye. Pacific Barrel Eye are also known as the spook fish. And for the sake of accuracy and dramatic effect, I'll just go ahead and refer to it as spook fish rather than a Pacific Barrel Eye from here on out. But found in the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans, these guys have some pretty odd characteristics, which is why we're talking about them right now. For starters, let's start with their eyes. On one hand, their eyes are just weird, but it allows them to scout out potential predators and not get eaten. This sort of tubular or tunnel vision has always been of general interest to marine biologists. Researchers at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute recently learned that spookfish actually have eyes that can rotate within a transparent shield. Well, their head is just transparent. This is a pretty amazing discovery since it now proves that these fish can fix their eye upward to avoid predators, but also allows them to rotate their eyes forward to do everyday stuff such as 
look at what they themselves are eating. Tubular vision in general is a nice little feature marine life like spookfish have because it's great at collecting sunlight. Since spookfish dwell in the depths of the ocean where it's pretty much all black, the narrow view of tubular vision helps them focus on silhouettes. So if they see the shadows of a shark, they know to get out of dodge. Number four, Venezuelan poodle moth. No, some breeder didn't figure out a way to breed a poodle and a moth. That would be weird. The Venezuelan poodle moth is a real creation of nature. I mean, first off, it's a insect with hair. With mammals, that's a pretty normal feature. But when insects do have hair, it's more for protection than anything else. These guys seem to have hair just for looks. As their name would suggest, they live in Venezuela, where it's pretty warm. Their hairs serve a lot of functions, such as helping sense their environment and fending off would-be predators. However, there's still a lot that scientists need to learn about the species, as it's still a relatively new discovery. It was first photographed in 2009 by Dr. Arthur Anker in the Gran Sabana region of Venezuela. Scientists believe it's an entirely new species, although I guess the jury is still out on that one. One thing we do know is these guys look pretty wild. Number three, sheep's head. The sheep's head's name is already pretty weird since who would think that something called a sheep's head would live underwater? But once you get over that mental hurdle, these things actually look fairly normal at first glance. But what sets these fish apart from their underwater peers is their teeth. Not only do they have several rows of stubby teeth, but their front row of teeth look just like human teeth. You can find sheep's head all over the oceans of North America, where they're known for yanking bait off of fishing hooks. Their strong teeth, along with their powerful jaws, also help them crush shelled marine life. Writing for Scientific American, Becky Crew points out that compared to other fish in the Sperideae family, sheep's head are actually pretty normal. While other fish in the family are hermaphroditic, sheep's head are not. They also don't contain natural hallucinogens like many other spiridae, which could be a plus or a minus, depending on your viewpoint. Number two, hogfish. You can find the hogfish living in the reefs in the Western Atlantic from Nova Scotia all the way down to South America and the Gulf of Mexico. They have this really odd, flat, elongated appearance. It's so ridiculous, they almost appear cartoonish. They also allegedly taste very good, which is why they're a highly prized catch by spearfishers. Yes, we live in the 21st century and people still hunt with spears, although it's more of a sport than survival. Anyway, given that they grow up to 36 inches and can weigh up to 24 pounds, you can see that they can for sure make for good eating. Their bright colors only serve to make them look more interesting. Plus, like their land-dwelling namesake, the hogfish have this distinctive looking long snout that they use to root around the ocean floor for food. Generally speaking, they tend to eat smaller marine life such as crab, worms, and shrimp. Number one, the oarfish. Simply put, the oarfish has to be seen to be believed. Though rarely ever encountered by humans, the oarfish lives in all tropical parts of the oceans. With four species among their ranks, the giant oarfish is the longest bony fish alive, reaching an impressive 36 feet long. I mean, that's seriously long. Given how crazy they look, and how rare humans actually see them, oarfish have been a source of fascination for years and years. In 1860, a giant 16-foot-long oarfish washed ashore a beach in Bermuda. People were amazed, though they originally thought it was a sea serpent. Historically, that seems to be a really common misconception. Since they also have this crazy-looking red dorsal fin, there's plenty of speculation that many of the mythical sightings of sea serpents were real events. They were just seeing giant oarfish. But this is pretty much the trend. Oarfish are mainly seen near the surface or when they wash ashore, and in most cases, they're either dead or mostly dead. Such as back in 1996 when a 23-foot-long giant oarfish washed ashore in San Diego near the naval base. Given that not everyone knows what an oarfish is, can you imagine seeing something like this for the first time? We actually really don't know a whole lot about these fish given that we don't get to interact with them very often. They're known to prefer very deep parts of the ocean. We're talking depths of at least 3,000 feet deep. They have virtually no muscle mass and can't survive the currents of more shallow waters, which is why they're almost always dead when they get to that point. 
However, in more recent years, marine biologists have utilized technology to glean some information about these odd fish. For example, they've been filmed feeding on jellyfish. They're also known to have an appetite for zooplankton, squid, and small fish. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you're wondering how they got their name, check this out. Their name was inspired by their long, slender bodies and how they were once believed to use their pelvic fins to row themselves through the water. They actually don't do that, but scientists decided to keep the name anyways. Here's what's next. Where it gets occasionally caught in fishing nets. It also goes by the name Pelican Gulper, and probably the coolest one of them all, the Umbrella Mouth Gulper. The gulper eel typically grows to about two and a half feet in length. This thing is mostly famous because of its large mouth, which is much larger than its body. The mouth is loosely...